Hello there, this is James at Scarf, DJ1978, and having never said or even consciously thought this until I recorded the original version of this video back in 2013, I agree with my good friend Milan Jeffdip 1992 that Superman is the ultimate example of the hero as described and envisioned by Joseph Campbell. As always, the link to the excellent video in which Milan discusses Superman is listed down as the underbar, and I ask everyone to please subscribe to both of his YouTube channels. But throughout recorded history and across the entire world, for as long as humans have been able to create stories, poetry and songs, we have created the legends of heroes. Sometimes those legends are based upon real people, in other cases, such as with Superman, they are entirely fictional, but from Harry Potter and Luke Skywalker to the myths and legends that were created surrounding everyone from George Washington or Davy Crockett to Kim Jong-il, and from Winston Churchill to Adolf Hitler, even deliberately as part of an organised propaganda campaign, or developing naturally out of the people's love and adoration for those individuals, every heroic story taps into into the same deeply rooted aspect of our collective unconscious, our emotional need for someone who is the personification of courage, altruism, virtue and nobility, a champion who will always protect and defend for no other reason than because it's the right thing to do, and from universal icons such as Superman to a little girl who believes that her daddy is the greatest man who ever lived, we create these heroes in our own minds regardless of what the actual truth may be not only to reassure ourselves that such people exist in the world, but also to inspire and motivate us to try and become heroes ourselves. To quote the character of Lee Nallis in one episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Commander, I'm going to tell you a story, and you may even believe it. I'm listening. During the occupation, I was a member of a minor resistance cell. The name is unimportant. One day, this was in the mountains surrounding the Sarvain Valley, we were ambushed by Cardassian troops. Only three of us managed to escape. We hid in the hills for two days. Finally, the lack of food and water forced us down into the valley. We made our way to a ridge overlooking a small lake. As I was the only one still carrying a phaser, I went ahead to scout for the enemy. Halfway down the embankment, I slipped went sprawling on my back down to the edge of the lake just as a huge Cardassian emerged from the water. He must have just finished bathing. He stood there, frozen in surprise, dressed only in his underwear, shivering in the cold. I lay there looking up at him, too stunned to even move, and it was only when he reached for a phaser rifle that was lying across his clothes on a nearby rock that I realised I was still holding my own phaser and I shot him. His body fell on top of me, and that's how my companions found us a moment later. One of them recognised him as Gulzareil, responsible for the massacre of half a dozen Bajoran villagers. Now, I tried to tell them what had happened, but they had already convinced themselves that I had killed Zareil in some kind of savage struggle, which is what they insisted on telling every Bajoran that we met. And no matter how hard I tried to deny it, the story continued to spread until it seemed all of Bajor had heard it. Soon, every victory won by the resistance was attributed to my leadership. Stories of my brilliance, my courage, my daring grew more and more unbelievable, yet the people insisted on believing them. My reputation even followed me into the labour camp, where my mere presence seemed to inspire my fellow prisoners, and I had done nothing but shoot an unarmed Cardassian in his underwear. I'll never forget the look on his face when he died. He was so embarrassed. So you see, Commander, I have done what Bajor needed me to do. I have allowed myself to be a slave to my reputation all of these years, and now it is enough. They still need you. But I am not the man they think I am. Perhaps not, but Bajor doesn't need a man. It needs a symbol, and that's what you are. No one's asking you to lead troops into battle, or to kill a hundred Cardassians with your bare hands. I saw you in front of the crowd on the promenade. They look at you, and they see strength, and honour, and decency. They look at you, and they see the best in themselves. But it's all based on a lie. No, it's based on a legend. 
and legends are as powerful as any truth. Bajor still needs that legend. It needs you. In case you missed those images in this video, yes, I am comparing the fictional character of Superman to Jesus Christ and the Prophet Muhammad. However, I don't mean that as an insult in any way, shape, form, or fashion, because this is a point that many anti-theists don't even seem to want to understand. Even if, as many of them argue, Christ never existed at all, and the legend of Christ is merely a retelling of the myths surrounding more ancient gods and demigods, the fact that the Bible is entirely inaccurate and self-contradictory to the point of being fictional in itself still has no impact whatsoever upon the legend or the need to believe. The link to a video in which I discuss this further is listed down as the underbar, but to quote one line from that video which sums it up very nicely, the only question is whether you're a Christian or not. If you are a Christian, then there is no doubt in your mind that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, that the inaccuracies and inconsistencies in the Bible don't detract from the overall message, or the fact that he sacrificed himself to redeem mankind. And if you're not a Christian, then the Bible is just a book. If he existed at all, then Christ was just a man, and it honestly doesn't matter how he died. The need to believe in heroes and the need to believe in gods, they are effectively hardwired into the human brain, as undeniable and as consuming as our need to eat and breathe, meaning that regardless of whether or not we accept, understand, or appreciate this emotional need within us all, the deep yearning for heroes and gods, the question of whether the legend itself is true or false has no relevance of any kind. After all, the fact that he's entirely fictional, and everybody knows that he's entirely fictional, has no bearing whatsoever on the reality that Superman is a universal icon. The fact that he is instantly recognised across the entire world, especially by people who have no knowledge of or interest in the comic books, the films, the TV series, the cartoons, or what have you. And why is he such a universal icon? Not merely the most famous comic book character of all time, but the personification of heroism itself? Ironically enough, considering that he's an entirely fictional character, it's got nothing to do with the comics, the cartoons, the TV series, or the films, just as Christ's iconic status has almost nothing to do with the Bible. Indeed, even as a boy, I never really liked Superman because he was too noble, too virtuous, and too heroic. Instead, I always preferred the more human and therefore relatable fictional heroes who had more ambiguous motives and morals. But although many people will reference things such as Red Kryptonite or alternate universe fiction in which Superman is corrupt or even evil, those negative aspects of Superman have never stuck in the public consciousness and have never done any him to detract from his universal status as a hero, precisely because when he does become corrupt, amoral, selfish, evil, or afraid, then he is no longer Superman. He's not merely a fictional character, instead he is the embodiment of what we all aspire to be. And likewise, Harry Potter, although I never really thought about him or about J.K. Rowling in the past, I've now come to realise that the reason why he is so popular across the entire world is that the books and movies inspired something just as deep within the collective unconscious of children and young adults, meaning that even today, friends of mine in their early to mid-twenties still adore the series as much as ever because it still inspires and touches them on a deeply subconscious level, leading to the possibility that even a hundred years from now, Harry Potter will still be an icon. But regardless of the future status of Harry Potter though, Superman's stature as a universal icon is unquestionable and assured, because the things that define him are not his invulnerability or his super strength, his red cape, his ability to fly, or his x-ray or heat vision. They're not even his relationship with Lois Lane or Wonder Woman, or the fact that he's from the planet Krypton. Instead, it is the certainty that even if he were a normal human being, he would still be Superman. As a matter of fact, even more so than ever, because without his invulnerability, the fact that he would sacrifice himself for others would make him even more of a hero. After all, at the end of the day, Superman is the eternal hero within us all. 
a constant inspiration and a reminder of what we can all choose to be. Oh. 